Hi, everyone. Imagine you're with a group of friends and you planned the most wonderful trip ever. You took your time off, and the only thing you need to do is to actually book your plane tickets. However, no one wants to be the one paying for the group, but you want to because you want to sit together during the plane ride. But they have a good reason to not want to. Because the last time that they did that, when they fronted either a big ticket item like a plane ticket or a hotel for the group of friends, it took them forever to get everyone to settle their shared expenses. And the reason being is whenever right now you're sharing finances with someone, the experience looks something like that, where you're basically signing up to become a free and unpaid accountant and project manager in the group where everyone has to remember what they paid, how did they decide to split the share, is there any old debts that they need to set, uh, settle with their friends. You have to review it to make sure there's not a World War III happening when someone disagrees about their share of the expenses. And then you have to collect it, or at least try to collect it. I would like to ask you, how many of you have friends who owe you money and you still haven't settled the bill? It happens to all of us. And this is not only for trips, because this happens to roommates who live together and they need to split, uh, split rent, utilities. It happens to partners who need to go grocery shopping or to friends who just go out on drinks and dinners on the nights out. And we have evolved a lot technologically, but the simple and the most principal thing of sharing moments and sharing finances together really hasn't evolved much throughout the history of FinTech. So let's look at it. Back in 1966, where most none of us were born at that time, that was the first start of the debit card technology. We then had our first digital transfer, followed by online banking. And here what I mean by online banking is just the ability for you to log into a laptop and see what's happening with your bank account information instead of going to uh, the bank office directly. And then in PayPal started with digital transfers and creating the fintech infrastructure that we're more familiar with today. And finally, in 2000s, we got our beloved contactless cards. And as you can see, in 40 years, there hasn't been anything done in the realm of social finance until 2009, which ha at what point happened two things. You first had an app maybe some of you are familiar with called Splitwise, which was really good at helping you understand who owes you money. So for example, if I paid 10 euros for breakfast, you paid 20 euros for lunch, and you paid 50 euros for dinner, we need to figure out who owes who and how much money. So you would have used an app like Splitwise. And then to actually get the money, you would use a different app, maybe PayPal or um, any other app that uh, you have in your country to actually request that money and try to get it back. Moving forward, we see in 2011 mobile wallets and neobanks, but nothing else has evolved since 2009 in the social finance space, which means that we're stuck in the same process, the one of fronting money for our friends and loved ones, calculating manually who owes who what, and then asking to be reimbursed, usually spread between two different applications. And this was a story until last year when China was born. And what we're bringing to the table is the ability for people to pay together so that you don't have to do any of the three previous steps I just mentioned. What do I mean by pay together? Well, imagine you're at the restaurant and you're just set to pay the bill. But instead of fronting it, you have paid and settled it at the same time in just one tap. Let me explain you how that works. In essence, what we've done in the background is we've connected multiple bank accounts to one card. So that the moment you actually make the payment, you're only getting charged your share of the expense in real time from your bank account. The restaurant gets the full amount, and they don't even know that you have split the bill. But you're never paying more than your share of the expense. And the setup is pretty quickly. Because you connect your bank account to Chino, you can create groups anytime with anyone that you like. The moment you create a group, we instantly issue a virtual card for all of people within the group. So you can either add it to your Apple Pay or Google Pay or use it to do online payments. Anyone in the group is able to make the payment for the group. Any payment is instantly pay and split. It's tracked in the app, so you know exactly who made the payment, what was the total amount, and what is the share of the expense that you paid. And you can actually change the split ratio anytime very easily. This is perfect for groups that are recurring, right? So it could be roommates, friends on trips, or couples. But we've also done an experience for maybe friends or colleagues that you don't meet as often. 
In that case, your friends and colleagues don't need to have the Chino app. You just generate a QR code on Chino. They select, they scan it, they select their share of the expense, and they can easily join the payment directly through their Apple Pay or Google Pay without needing the Chino app. These are just some of the pictures that we receive on a weekly basis from our users. Because the reason why people love Chino is not because it's very efficient and seamless, but because we actually save a lot of relationships. What I mean by that is that whenever you're trying to build memories and having fun with the people that you love, the number one thing that ruins that experience is when you have to talk about money. Imagine you're on a date, and you have to say, well, I paid last date, so probably he should offer to pay this date, and maybe you forgot another payment. There's huge amounts of resentment when you constantly evolve the conversation of money. But with Chino, you have a conversation once of how you want to split the ratio, and then you forget it at all. And the segment that we're focusing on is Gen Z, because believe it or not, they're splitting with someone else at least on a daily basis. It could be a coffee during their, with their classmate from university. Um, it could be buying groceries with their roommates or going on a date with their partner. The frequency is very, very um, often. And the volumes are also pretty big. This is the statistics of an average couple from Germany and how much they spend together on a monthly basis. To give you perspective, a neobank usually tries to get at least 600 euros of the share of wallets of the user, while we have at least 900 euros. I say at least because we're not even including rent and utilities into this. And our network, how we're growing is through network effects. Whenever we acquire one user, they bring at least two other users to our platform, which means it contributes to the 40% of our entire user acquisition strategy. And our vision is to enable group payments everywhere. So I spoke a lot about the consumer sides, but the businesses are also suffering because of this problem. When you're looking at the online travel agency, 80% of payments fail due to insufficient funds. And it makes sense, right? Because if you're trying to purchase an hotel for three friends for a week, you might not have 1,500 euros ready available in your bank account to make that payment. But this equates to a colossal loss of revenue just in Europe alone every single year. It's equivalent to 40 billion euros. I would like to conclude today by saying that although we're live all across Europe, Finland has become our top market. So we're very, very grateful to be here and coinciding with Slush. And if you haven't done already so, I invite you to join and make your splitting expenses simple with Chino. Thank you. Thanks.